Thank you. I'm from Lava Amsterdam. People who have seen me this afternoon know that I talk really fast, so I'm going to talk even more fast. Talking about visual language and how to find the right toilet. Very difficult sometimes to find the right toilet. So tonight I'm going to talk about 16 minutes, 22, 5, 20, 225 images. It's about four seconds per image. <clears throat> it's even faster than this afternoon. In 16 minutes I'm going to talk about monkeys, the CIA. I've skipped the coffee bit, do the toilets and some things that I don't understand. Text is really dangerous. I'm a visual person, I hate text. Text is dangerous. So I'm going to talk about the power of visual communication. This is text. Sometimes some text come in. This is a Dutch, no, this is a guy, a Dutch guy who was trying to uh, have a job in Lava. And he's writing, I'm a deaf student. I'm a deaf student. Blah, 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 blah. I hope to hear from you soon. Wrong. Text is very dangerous, so you have to be really careful with text. This is another guy who wants to work in Lava. Lava, that's the name of our studio. The guy is named Falcon. We gave him a job immediately. Text is funny, sometimes. <laughs> then, um, um, another thing with text. Once we were working for a uh, newspaper, and that day, we were doing art direction, that day the news item came in that a monkey called Boquito, a gorilla, escaped from the Rotterdam Zoo by jumping over a ditch. Now look at this. A monkey, a gorilla, named Boquito, escaped from his cage in the zoo by jumping over a ditch. All the newspapers got this news, and all the newspapers put an image of a gorilla there. So they did this, which I think is stupid, because we all know how a gorilla looks like. If you look at this news item, what is really weird about this news item is that he was jumping over a ditch. So we decided to have a picture of the ditch in the newspaper, because that's the real key thing that is challenging that news item. Again, power of visuals. So the ditch. No gorilla. Lava. What's lava about? We don't know. We were a European design agency of the year a long time ago. Let's go over it. We do graphic design, branding, identity design, interaction design, all those things, and we never know exactly what we do. So we've put all the words on top of each other, and then there's one word remaining, which is a sign. Is the translator getting crazy of me already? No? So, signs. So somehow we do signs. We make signs. So, I skipped the corporate movie. And how it all begun with lava, let me quickly explain you a little bit how we started the design studio, get back to science later. Very much in the beginning, a friend of mine, Greet, and myself, Hans, is my name, can't go back, it's my name, Hans, and Greet, wanted to start a design studio. So Hans and Greet was not really a good name to start a design studio because it reminds us of this. So very bad name for a design studio. So we had no name, um, and we had no money, but we had an empty agenda. And having an empty agenda gives you a lot of time to think and to do nice things, but Friends of us were warning us, oh my god, if you work for yourself and you have your own studio, very soon you have no time anymore because you will be really, really busy. So we didn't like that concept and having no more holidays was really a bad concept. So we decided to start with a holiday. So we took a plane, went to Indonesia, all the way to East Java and here we found a volcano and we came up with the name Lava. So going on holiday is really fresh for your mind sometimes. So we have the name. We did some travel, we ended the trip at the Tiananmen Square under the portrait of Mr. Mao and there we decided to take a train back home. A long train, Trans-Siberia Express, all the way through your beautiful country. And it's a long way, five day train, and it's going all this way, beautiful, 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 but I can tell you it's only trees and snow. Trees and snow, trees and snow, trees and snow for five days. So I knew this and I wanted to have a book along with me on the train. The only book I could find in Beijing at that time was this book. There's no other books in English, only this book. This book is from a writer, Robert Ludlum, who writes about CIA agents. And this is one of those CIA agents. And the CIA agent was trained with three lessons in life. Lesson one, think as the enemy. Lesson two, always stay in control. Lesson three, do the unexpected. These were the three lessons in life being a secret agent. And I was looking at it and I thought, actually, for a designer it's the same. The only thing I change is enemy into client. So I live up to these standards up to today. So we were back home, started our design studio, made a little letterhead, uh, put some extra text there, you know, telephone numbers, address, and some extra line here. That line says, when you think you've got everything under control, you don't drive fast enough. When you think you've got everything under control, you don't drive fast enough. 
This was set by Alan Prost. He's a former Formula One driver. I really like this. Always play it on the edge. Try to drive as fast as possible. I like that. So we put it on our letterhead. Uh, this is the guy, Alan Prost. This is his car. And uh, a publisher from the United States came making these funky design books. He went to our studio and said, can we have a page on your studio in my book? And I said, oh, fantastic, you know, please have a portfolio page of our studio. So he did, published the book, the book came back later, really nice page about Lava, but the director of the company is Alan Post. <laughs> Wrongly spelled also. So, dangerous, text is dangerous, visual things is my thing. So back to science, I'm almost, almost finished. Science, I studied science because science somehow is what we do. And signs are a kind of cliches. Through cliches of signs, we communicate. It's very good that traffic signs are the same everywhere in the world. That makes us feel comfortable. That makes us easy, feel easy. We can read it, we can understand it. So there is a value of having cliches. There is a value of signs being similar everywhere. Official communication and signs are about cliches, especially toilet signs. If I want to go to a toilet, I want to know exactly which door to take. And probably, most of you have experienced a situation where you go to a toilet, you walk in, you think you've got the right door, and you're not sure about the design, and you go to the other door to check it, and then you think, nah, maybe, maybe that one is mine. So it's very good to have clear visuals there. Now, many designers around the world have changed these signs, have been creative on these signs. Look what happens. This is the normal cliche sign. This is how it should be. And then I studied a little bit how toilets work. This is a dual flush toilet. In Japan, you've got really crazy toilets with buttons on the side. I don't know if ever one of you have seen one. You sit on it, there's all kinds of buttons, and it presses hot air or cold air or hot water or cold water all the way up your bottom. Really comfortable, strange. There's no instructions written there. There's only strange icons that I can't understand and strange things happen when I sit on them. Now, I was trying them because I'm very curious. I'm sitting on them. Some strange designer has put the instructions on the inside there, which means I'm sitting there, look what happens, there's the instructions, so I'm sitting there trying to dig, standing up, reading them, and go sit back again. That is strange design, I think. So, toilets. So, I came, I came in uh, Iran one day. Now, here you see what visual communication can do more powerful than text. The only thing you need here is this. And this. The rest is useless. You don't need this MC thing, you don't need that toilet, I don't know what it is. The only man and the arrow is significant. Very clear? Cultural differences. And beautiful pieces of art, very clear. So this is allowed. This is creative variations on cliches. It's a man, it's a woman. I can easily understand. It's a he or a she. It's a man, woman, very creative in Russia, beautiful, really beautiful. I can still recognize what's going on. Very good, very good, so all good, all good. Now then, very creative, really good. So I'm collecting actually these, so I'm trying to produce a book in a couple of years now. So if you find any in one of your travels, please send it to me, I'll give you my email address later. Crazy signs you find sometimes, you know, what can you do, you were in a hurry, don't piss here. And then this. I was in Morocco one day, many, many things going on. This sign, what is this sign saying? It's a woman. Why? It looks like a man, you know, it looks like someone with a hat. It's not a woman. It is a woman, because in French it says pour femme, which is woman. But I'm a little bit curious about that. Go to the other one. Yes, that's the man. All right, I'm right. So that's woman. What is that? What is that? Well, that is the curly hair. Now, in Morocco, people have headscarves. Useless. So, very weird. This is a good one. Another good one. Very creative. Is it? Very creative one. Yes. And then this one. Why? Man, man, man. How many times you want to say the same thing? Man, woman. Then this, in China. I was really in a hurry. Went to the door. I think it's a boy. I'm not sure. I think it's a boy. But it says small. I'm really tall. Difficult. So I went to the other door. The other door says big, but it's a woman. I'm completely confused, I'm a big man. Where am I gonna go? So, the real funny thing is that the big door is small and the small door is big. 
I was completely confused and was peeing in my pants. Now, this was in Korea. Send signs to me, please. So, sometimes people sending things back, I get some really unexpected feedback, like this one. What does this say? Weird. And sometimes I get signs that I really don't understand when I'm traveling and looking at things. What does this mean? What does this mean? First of all, I thought, this is someone who asked, can I please interview you? Or, we've produced a new ice cream. Do you want to try it? <laughs> the point now is that this hat, somehow, this is very well designed because it gives you a glimpse of that it's police maybe, and it actually it is security check in India. Now, this one, what the fuck does this mean? What does this mean? This is no spitting. I mean, when I'm doing tests with students, they think it's like a baby caught something or... But they made a circle in order to make a corner of a wall and a floor. Crazy, crazy sign. What does this mean? This is clear, right? This says no dogs, right? Do we agree? Well, the sign is no, no dogs, which means yes dogs. Now, hold on. Even here in Moscow, traffic lights. Everywhere in the world, red means stop. Not in Moscow. In Moscow, we have to put an extra sign here <laughs> saying stop. I was curious. So I was standing there waiting to see what happens. Red, stop. I understand. Orange, stop. I understand. Now, what will happen when it turns to green? I expected a little man coming there, taking away the stop sign and let me go drive and put it back there when it was orange or red again. So it's still there. I think it's useless waste of money because if people don't stop, you have to change behavior somehow. It doesn't work with more signs. So back to toilets, crazy toilets. These signs on my toilet in Korea in a hotel. What does this mean? I mean, I want to flush the toilet. Just flush the toilet. Only flush the toilet. Man, women, old people, children, I don't know. Don't touch the buttons if you don't understand them. So what is this all about? So visual communication is about telling visual stories in a very clear way. And understanding cliches can help a lot. Last one. Toilet brand in Korea. It is a polar beer. Now, in my culture, polar beers are cold and dangerous. What is the meaning of a toilet brand to use, to choose a polar beer as your icon, as your logo? I don't know. So I was looking at it, asked a few Koreans, and they said, no, 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 we see a polar beer as very cuddly, as really warm, as nice and friendly. I warned them never to sit on one if you see one in real. So they don't. That was it. Thank you.